Did they have a clue what they had on their hands then? That this tattooed, undersized punk would become one of the most talked about wrestlers of the modern era. Someone had a notion. Maybe without his advocacy, CM Punk would have come and gone. He did not, though. Loved by many, hated by many, let's take a look back at Punk's early days in the WWE as he clawed his way out of ECW and into the spotlight. From Backyard Wrestling, The Independence, TNA, and Ohio Valley Wrestling, Punk makes his in-ring debut giving the WWE Universe a look at someone they may have heard about. As luck would have it, on this particular night, Punk's first match is not in front of a casual SmackDown crowd. It's the way ECW was usually aired, before or after a SmackDown show in front of WWE fans. On this night, it's a red-hot ECW crowd likely fans of the old authentic ECW, in a sold-out Hammerstein ballroom. There are differences between casual fans and diehards. For one, diehards follow everything. They know what's happening outside of the WWE bubble, and yes, it would appear this crowd is familiar with CM Punk. His first opponent is the ECW original Just Incredible. In a little over four minutes, Punk submits the opposition, and we're off to the races. Punk has himself a nice little streak, beating Just Incredible in a short rematch, tapping out C.W. Anderson in under three minutes, getting the better of Steven Richards, annihilating Shannon Moore in under two minutes, giving him more of the same the following week, and running through Danny Doring in a little over a minute. Basically, he gets the Anaconda Vice over and it's making everyone tap out. Someone was definitely grooming Punk for an amazing moment using that submission move, but someone else would put those plans on ice. More on that in a bit. Punk gets involved in a conflict with Mike Knox because his girlfriend, Kelly Kelly, overtly flirts with Punk. Knox intends to do something about it, but he's not willing to confront Punk head-on. He's more than willing to do something from behind. Punk still bests Mike Knox and sends him scurrying off. For a Halloween costume contest, of course, Kelly Kelly dresses up as CM Punk. She's absolutely infatuated with the guy. Her boyfriend takes exception with this and Punk jumps him for last week's ambush. Like last time, Mike Knox is sent running away. Kelly Kelly simply laughs over the men fighting She's a real troublemaker. The wrestlers finally meet up in a match, a qualifying match for the Elimination Chamber at the upcoming ECW pay-per-view. The bigger man proves to be formidable. Regardless of that, Knox taps out to the Anaconda device. Punk is headed to December to dismember. A rematch takes place on the next episode of ECW. Kelly Kelly cheers for Punk throughout. What kind of a messed up relationship is this? For the second time, Punk submits Mike Knox. Now, at this point, CM Punk's getting over. Forget his Hammerstein ballroom reception. I mean with the regular WWE audience. There are cheers, fans chanting his name, people bringing signs. You'd think, let's elevate this guy up the card and start to do some business. Nothing exemplifies this better than at the 2006 Survivor Series. Punk gets to be on a five-man team along with the Hardys and DX. He's sharing the ring with Attitude Era stars and chants are breaking out for him. They face the team of Johnny Nitro, Gregory Helms, Mike Knox, Edge, and Randy Orton. The baby faces slaughter the opposition, a complete sweep. Team DX walks out of Survivor Series unscathed. CM Punk certainly walks away looking better than ever. With all of this momentum, it seems Punk's going to walk into the Elimination Chamber at December to dismember and absolutely dominate. Well, that was Paul Heyman's plan, but... With McMahon -a mania running wild, Paul's told to go fly a kite. CM Punk was going to tap out the big show and win the whole thing, walking out as the new ECW champion. Instead, probably just to spite Heyman, CM Punk is the first man eliminated. Bobby Lashley goes on to win this and become the champion, even if it's not what the fans want whatsoever. The fallout from December to Dismember wasn't good for Punk. Because of Heyman clashing with McMahon creatively, Paul was relieved of his on- and off-screen duties. Punk's closest ally, the man who had his back even back in Ohio Valley Wrestling, was gone. Going forward in Punk's ECW run, the straight-edge star would have to weather Vince's booking all by his lonesome.
We move on with the rest of Punk's run. He teams up with Rob Van Dam to battle Test and Hardcore Holly. Punk nearly wins, but the goons who were previously Paul Heyman's enforcers cause a DQ. A returning Sabu helps Punk and Rob Van Dam dispose of the henchmen. Oh, by the way, just in case you're curious what happens between Kelly Kelly and Mike Knox, well, there's that. Things escalate between Hardcore Holly and CM Punk. Holly traps Punk in a corner, raining down fists, forcing a disqualification. Punk gets the last laugh after the bell rings. Hardcore Holly issues a challenge to Punk, make him tap out officially in a match, but Punk only has three minutes to get the job done. Punk comes close, but the time limit expires. Holly leaves Punk laying afterward with an Alabama slam. CM Punk and Hardcore Holly clash once again. The veteran achieves a decisive victory, ending the match with an Alabama slam. Kelly Kelly teases the fans, promising a scantily clad expose. Matt Stryker berates her with blatant misogyny before saying he's going to beat up CM Punk. They have a match that Punk wins thanks to a full frontal distraction from Kelly Kelly. This gets Punk in a minor feud with Stryker, who guest commentates during a match with Elijah Burke. Punk wins. He's not running through the roster submitting everyone now, but he's still being booked okay. Punk gets another moment on a big stage, Entering at number 11 at the 2007 Royal Rumble, he does manage to last a while before being one of many thrown out by the great Kali. Back on ECW, well, now Punk's losing to Matt Stryker of all people. Punk does go on to once again force Mike Knox to submit. However, after the match, Punk becomes the victim of a Gene Snitsky beatdown. For now, on to more important things. Taking on Johnny Nitro, Punk has the chance to qualify for the Money in the Bank match at WrestleMania. Punk finally busts out the go to sleep securing his spot. Punk has no problem showing off his new finisher either. Now, at this time, a stable called the New Breed has formed. Young upstarts looking to rule East ECW by taking out the ECW originals. Elijah Burke tries to convince Punk to join their fight. For now, Punk is left to consider it. After losing to Mr. Kennedy on SmackDown, CM Punk is told about the importance of having allies. Elijah Burke demonstrates this by assisting Punk in defeating Hardcore Holly. Building up to Money in the Bank at WrestleMania, CM Punk, The Hardys, and Edge tag against Randy Orton, Finley, King Booker, and Mr. Kennedy. After Edge abandons his team, it is CM Punk who eats the pinfall. However, on SmackDown, CM Punk takes on King Booker in singles action and actually pulls off an upset against the main eventer. Moving on to Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 23, Randy Orton, Edge, Matt and Jeff Hardy, King Booker, Finley, Mr. Kennedy, and CM Punk go to war for the hanging briefcase. After paying homage to the legendary Terry Funk, CM Punk becomes the recipient of a devastating RKO. Thanks to Mr. Kennedy, this opportunity slips through Punk's fingers, and Kennedy goes on to obtain the briefcase. With that out of the way, Stevie Richards eats another GTS. The new breed continue to pressure Punk to join them, this time in a more threatening manner. Now the ECW originals are getting in Punk's ear to join them. In yet another match with Stevie Richards, new breed member Matt Stryker comes out to be in Punk's corner. ECW original The Sandman comes out to do the same. The Sandman accidentally hits Punk with a kendo stick after defeating Richards. Punk is none too happy with the ECW original. In the main event, RVD wrestles Marcus Corvon. Elijah Burke injures Sabu during the contest, prompting CM Punk to check on him. Punk teases a fight with the new breed. Instead, he joins their ranks, it would appear. There's a bit of friction between Punk and Elijah. To earn trust, he helps him out against RVD. Well, not really, I guess. He apologizes to his new comrades for the screw-up. They have to be united, as tonight they take on the originals. However, it's 4-on-4, four four, so Burke tells Punk to sit this one out. Things come down to just RVD and Burke. Punk intentionally attacks Burke, costing him the match. After his loss, Elijah is dealt a GTS. To punish Punk for his actions, Elijah Burke sends Kevin Thorne into battle. It does not end well for Thorne, though. The new breed is beginning to fall apart at the seams. 
Burke and Corvon remain united as he helps the former linebacker score a win over Punk. This leaves Punk with injured ribs. Punk, not at 100%, has a showdown with Elijah Burke at Judgment Day. Obviously, Punk's weakness is heavily exploited. The match goes long. After nearly 20 minutes, there's a go to sleep and 1 2 3. The feud carries on back in ECW. Tagging with Van Dam, Punk's ribs are once again a target, even to the extent that Corvon is disqualified for continuing to assault Punk despite not being the legal man. RVD is also left worse for wear as the new breed stand strong. The leader of the new breed meets his straight edge enemy in a no disqualification match. The ribs continue to be a detrimental issue with regards to exacting Burke's comeuppance. Add to that that Marcus Corvan can legally interfere, CM Punk is faced with the reality that this fight simply cannot be won. However, the war wages on at one night stand. Tagging with Tommy Dreamer and the Sandman, CM Punk is able to come out on top this time by winning a table match for his team. Punk may start getting back on track. He even defeats Carlito on Raw. After being drafted to ECW, Chris Benoit debuts tagging with Punk against Marcus Corvon and Elijah Burke. Marcus Corvon is disqualified for being in the ring longer than five seconds while not being legal. How stupid. Punk and Benoit take it to the new breed members after the bell. The big story is that Bobby Lashley was drafted to Raw. This leaves the ECW title vacant. A small four-man tournament is held. Chris Benoit wins his match, and CM Punk overcomes Marcus Corvan to do the same. The stage is set for Benoit and Punk to wrestle for the ECW title at Vengeance on Sunday. Because of the horrific actions of one man, wrestling fans are robbed of that match. More importantly, two individuals are robbed of their existence. Johnny Nitro takes Benoit's place at Vengeance. At this point, no one knows why Benoit didn't show up to work. Nonetheless, Nitro and Punk try to put something together on short notice. Punk likely wasn't winning the ECW title this night in the first place, and those plans don't change. Johnny Nitro wins the vacant championship. Punk ventures to establish himself as the number one contender for the ECW title by going through Elijah Burke in a two out of three falls match. With the Elijah Express, Burke wins the first fall. Punk manages a flash pin to even up the score. Punk finally ends the contest with his GTS, a move no one has kicked out of. Johnny Nitro lets the number one contender know that he's ready. Building up to the big match, CM Punk starts to hand out losses to anyone that steps in the ring with him. At the Great American Bash, John Morrison, no longer going by Johnny Nitro, puts his belt on the line. The championship is at Punk's fingertips, but Morrison is an egg the challenger just can't crack. CM Punk's pursuit of the championship doesn't end there. He teams with Tommy Dreamer to wrestle Elijah and Morrison. A GTS secures a victory over Burke. The chase will continue. The champion sets up a three-way contest between CM Punk, Elijah Burke, and Tommy Dreamer. The winner will share the ring with Morrison in a 15 minutes of fame match. Elijah Burke is the one to suffer a GTS and a loss, something he should be used to by now. So next week, it's 15 minutes of fame. You either defeat Morrison or at least last 15 minutes for a future ECW title shot. It should be noted in their previous outings, Morrison put Punk away at around the eight minute mark. Tonight, they nearly wrestle the full 15 minutes, but Punk gets a pinfall victory. He's getting one more shot at the title. A contract signing makes it official. The match will happen at SummerSlam. For now, Big Daddy V gets his hands on Punk. The near 500 pound wrestler gives Punk such a beating that he can't continue to fight and is counted out. The following week, the Boogeyman is actually Punk's partner against Morrison and The Miz. And of course, they work well as a team. Team. Morrison gets super physical to soften his soon-to-be challenger up. He even hits a corkscrew neckbreaker to finish Punk off. It hasn't been an easy last couple of weeks, but CM Punk walks into SummerSlam ready. Third time's a charm. The challenger is determined to walk away the champion tonight. It doesn't matter. Morrison decides to take a shortcut after everything Punk has endured. John Morrison is still the ECW champion. Although all is not lost, the situation becomes dire. 
Punk does win a fatal four-way to earn another shot at Morrison, but this is it. It's his last chance at the championship. Morrison won't go silently into the night. He knows to target the head and neck of CM Punk because his corkscrew neckbreaker got the job done once, and it can surely do it again. Punk kicks out of the champion Starship Pain, but in avoiding the neckbreaker, he's able to survive and nail the go to sleep. At long last, CM Punk is the ECW champion. We'll never know where he'd be at this point had he won the title in the Elimination Chamber, but at least no one can say CM Punk didn't face adversity to finally make it here. It makes sense that CM Punk's first challenger should be his greatest ECW rival, Elijah Burke. After taking care of business in tag team action, the new champion heads into Unforgiven for his first defense. There's a continued theme that Punk's neck is a weak point. Naturally, that comes into play. Add to it that Punk's back is focused on in preparation for Burke's finisher, the Elijah Express. The challenger is the aggressor. This is his match. CM Punk isn't capable of an outright display of superiority. In fact, he retains by eking out a win. If the champion should look strong, well, that's not the case here. After defeating Matt Stryker, Big Daddy V, who's already beaten Punk, lets the champion know he's coming for the title. At No Mercy, where the title match happens, Punk looks like he's not worthy of the gold he holds. After Stryker causes a DQ, Big Daddy V turns him into a pancake. Well, it gets Big Daddy V over, it doesn't do much for the ECW champion. With CM Punk now in a debilitated state, the former champion has a golden opportunity on his hands. It's like watching a kitten fight a pit bull. Punk fires up after a long beating, but it's for naught. Morrison puts him away. The only consolation is that the belt was not on the line. This should make Morrison the number one contender, but Cyber Sunday is on the horizon, where the fans supposedly get to choose the next challenger. For the moment, Punk must face all three potential challengers with only one other wrestler to tag with, and Punk chooses Kane from SmackDown. In his current state, Punk is the weak link, but the big red machine comes through in the end. Going into Cyber Sunday, CM Punk tags with Balls Mahoney and gets to look strong before the pay-per-view by pinning John Morrison. So who do the fans choose at Cyber Sunday? Now wait a minute. Not the guy who can crush Punk. Not the guy who can give the fans the best match. This is fishy. Do not believe there was any voter fraud. Well, okay, if you say so. Anyway, at around the 9 minute mark, The Miz falls to the GTS and we move on. To find a new number one contender, John Morrison defeats The Miz with his corkscrew neck breaker. Speaking of The Miz, in his title match with Punk, Morrison comes up short thanks to The Miz's distraction. The three-way feud heats up on an episode of SmackDown when both Miz and Morrison target CM Punk causing a disqualification in a match with Jamie Noble. Noble gets a parting shot in amidst the chaos. This leads to Jamie Noble getting a rematch with Punk in ECW. Miz and Morrison joined commentary for the occasion. After Punk nails the GTS, he's immediately jumped by both men. The champ is left laying before he goes on to defend his belt against both of them at Survivor Series. As expected, the Survivor Series triple threat begins as a handicap match. Sooner rather than later, Miz and Morrison's cohesion disintegrates and the contest becomes every man for himself. The Miz eats another GTS and that's that. It's time to move on from these two. The Big Red Machine hasn't been doing so well lately. Two even bigger monsters have had his number in recent weeks. Kane can't continue the struggle alone. When Punk is faced with the unenviable task of wrestling Mark Henry, things go in the way one would expect. In fact, Big Daddy V causes a disqualification before CM Punk can mount any serious offense. The behemoths do what they do best, but someone has a score to settle. CM Punk has an ally in dealing with the super heavyweights. While this isn't their first rodeo together, Kane and the ECW champion demonstrate their teamwork by defeating Deuce and Domino. But at Armageddon, what these two have on their plate is a ton of sirloin beef. In the match, CM Punk serves as a punching bag. The Attitude Era veteran has his back, and the time comes where CM Punk has Kane's back. Punk fires up. Just when he gets cooking, his momentum is suddenly halted. Mark Henry and Big Daddy V walk away a dominant unit. The feud continues on SmackDown. This time, CM Punk and Kane have Rey Mysterio on their side, while Mark Henry and Big Daddy V have MVP. The big men continue their overwhelming ways, but who should step up and get the win? 
After a 619 and a chokeslam from Kane, Rey Mysterio actually pins Mark Henry. As far as the ECW Championship goes, a new challenger leaves his mark. When a match between MVP and CM Punk ends in a disqualification, Chavo Guerrero appears and destroys the champion. This is the start of Chavo becoming Punk's next great rival. To get to the ECW title, Chavo has to first beat Punk in a non-title match. When Punk lands wrong and hurts his knee, Chavo's opportunity for the win becomes apparent. Much of Punk's offense relies on having a pair of good legs. Guerrero does everything he can to get rid of one of them. This prevents the champion's GTS. In preventing Chavo from re-entering the ring, CM Punk smartly secures the win with only one good leg. Next week, Guerrero and Punk wrestle again. This time, Chavo puts his focus on something Punk's had issues with before, the ribs. To make sure of a win this time, a little bit of cheating might be required. It backfires. After a disqualification, Chavo finds out what the GTS is like. CM Punk and Edge end up getting into a verbal spat. The whole thing goes awry. Both Chavo and Edge double team Punk and throw his shoulder into the steel ring post. Not good since Punk's taking Chavo on for a third time tonight. Not only does the ECW champion have to worry about his shoulder being targeted, but Edge joins commentary as well. Edge is gonna do what Edge is gonna do, and Chavo Guerrero wins by countout. He's finally getting his title shot. Before that, on SmackDown, Edge and Chavo team up against Rey Mysterio and CM Punk. Edge gets his team disqualified, and CM Punk suffers a post-match beatdown. When CM Punk defends his ECW championship, the match is no disqualification. Chavo suffers a go to sleep, but without rolls, Edge can interfere. Chavo is handed the title on a silver platter. CM Punk's reign has come to an end. Edge has made Punk's life a living hell. On SmackDown, Punk seeks to unleash all of his revenge in a match, but the World Heavyweight Champion is able to walk away triumphant. CM Punk isn't through trying to regain the ECW title, but first he has the Royal Rumble. Guess who eliminates him? Guerrero is kryptonite at this point. It's fiesta time. Chavo wants to celebrate his championship win. There are balloons, a mariachi band, and wait, are mariachi supposed to do that? Well, if they're CM Punk, then yes. It's time to start getting some payback. On SmackDown, Rey Mysterio and CM Punk clash with Edge and Chavo Guerrero. If Chavo's kryptonite, then CM Punk's donning lead armor tonight because he pins him with the GTS. CM Punk does have another opportunity at the ECW title coming up, but first, he battles Chavo Guerrero in a Gulf of Mexico match. There are no rules, you just have to toss your opponent into the Gulf of Mexico to win. Seeing as how they have to go from the ring to the body of water, these two end up battling all over. Punk finally gets the job done with a GTS. At No Way Out, Punk has his shot. The champion does everything he can to avoid the go to sleep. No cheating required this time. The champion uses his brain to hold onto the belt. On the following episode of ECW, CM Punk gets a nice rub when he teams with the legendary Ric Flair against Shelton Benjamin and Elijah Burke. Flair's figure four gets the win for he and Punk. This leads to CM Punk taking on Shelton Benjamin and Elijah Burke in a triple threat match, the winner becomes the number one contender for the ECW Championship. With a GTS, it's going to be CM Punk versus Chavo Guerrero again. The next week in their title match, Chavo does what he does best against Punk, target a body part and go to town. With a Guerrero frog splash, Chavo puts CM Punk away one more time. With CM Punk now appearing more regularly on both Raw and SmackDown, it's only a matter of time before he catches a break. That begins with a Money in the Bank qualifying match. Whenever Big Daddy V is in the picture, nothing ever goes well for the Straight Edge star, but tonight it's different. No pinfall or submission, but Punk does win by countout. He's headed to WrestleMania for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Nothing major happens in the meantime, so moving right along to WrestleMania. Kim Kardashian is the host? I have no memory of this. It's Mr. Kennedy, MVP, John Morrison, Carlito, Shelton, Benjamin, Chris Jericho, and of course CM Punk, all competing for one briefcase that can change a person's career in an instant. Every man is willing to go through hell to seize the opportunity, but there can only be one, and tonight it's CM Punk. With that, this is now the final chapter chapter of his ECW run. 
CM Punk took the opportunity away from Jericho specifically, so the two deal with it on Raw. Punk is still an underdog against the big names, at least he has the briefcase now. As far as ECW goes, the CM Punk Kane connection continues. The Big Red Machine did what Punk couldn't and took the ECW title from Guerrero. The duo main event against Chavo Guerrero and Shelton Benjamin. It's Punk who picks up the win against Shelton. On Raw, CM Punk participates in the King of the Ring tournament. Mr. Money in the Bank gets past Matt Hardy and gets a very big win using the GTS against Jericho. It isn't until the final round that Punk is bested when he taps out to William Regal. Mr. Money in the Bank ends up wrestling Edge on SmackDown after everything Edge has done, Punk has yet to deliver a proper comeuppance. It's no different tonight, but what's notable is that Punk pushes Edge to the next level this time. The match is over 15 minutes long, he even hits his GTS. Edge survives by rolling outside, a distraction from Zack Ryder is the only reason Edge wins the match. Punk is catching up, and soon enough he will have the last laugh. A WWE tag title opportunity is in the future for CM Punk and Kane. To prove their worth, they go through Bam Neely and Chavo Guerrero. Before their title shot, The Miz and John Morrison don't give Punk and Kane an easy night. Not only does The Miz pin CM Punk in a singles match, John Morrison is actually able to do the same to Kane later on. The champions proceed to lay both future challengers out to end the show. The tag title match happens at Judgment Day. Kane and Punk have a good showing, but Morrison's corkscrew neckbreaker puts Punk away, like it has in the past. The former ECW champions have the chance to regain the gold coming up. Four former champions meet in a tag team match because they will all be facing each other in a number one contenders match at one night stand. After Chavo Guerrero pins Tommy Dreamer, the Big Show makes a statement by returning and putting the hurt on everyone. Big Show reminds all involved that he's also a former ECW champion and inserts himself into the number one contenders match. Building to the pay-per-view, CM Punk finds himself facing Chavo Guerrero. It's not shocking that Chavo beats Punk in singles action once again. Although what is surprising is that on the following SmackDown, CM Punk puts Morrison away in about two minutes. On to One Night Stand. The number one contenders match is a Singapore cane match, you know, kendo sticks. The big man dons the crimson mask and goes on a rampage. This is his match, everyone else is just in it. After pinning Dreamer, show leaves as the new number one contender. The Big Show will face Kane at Night of Champions for the ECW title. A fatal four-way match is booked among those who came up short at One Night Stand. The winner faces Kane later in the show, but in a non-title match. CM Punk seizes the opportunity by pinning Chavo Guerrero. When Punk runs into his tag partner in the main event, it's not a squash, although it's mostly Kane on offense with Punk trying to survive. Punk does begin building momentum and gives the champion a cause for concern. In the end, CM Punk is pinned by a chokeslam. Afterward, Miz and Morrison attack both men. It would seem Kane and Punk still have to deal with the tag team champions. Kane and CM Punk pursue tag team gold one more time. CM Punk's ribs are still tender from last week's match against his partner and after throwing himself outside, they become an issue. Punk becomes the weak link and once again, the corkscrew neckbreaker does him in. Next week, CM Punk's rival John Morrison meets him in singles action. Punk's ribs continue to be an issue and Morrison isn't reserved with regards to working the weakness over. Punk wills his body through the pain, Morrison is put away with a GTS. On the June 23rd edition of Raw, the draft is held. Superstars from Raw, SmackDown, and ECW are part of a roster shakeup. What does this mean for CM Punk? Well, everything. He's drafted to Raw. Mr. Money in the Bank is at long last officially on the big stage. This is the end of his ECW run, but in a parting match, CM Punk teams with Matt Hardy to do something that's been eluding him, a tag team victory over The Miz and John Morrison. After Matt Hardy pins Morrison, that's one thing off Punk's list. There's still something else that's been eluding him though. Edge's list of sins is long. Batista acts as God's wrath, inflicting hell on earth for the transgressor. Someone else has a long-awaited score to settle. Taking advantage of Edge's destruction, CM Punk takes what's left of the ashes and cashes in his Money in the Bank contract. He is the new World Heavyweight Champion. The rest is history.
so controversial and talked about by haters and those who love him even today. Whether you view Punk as the devil, an angel, or just a flawed human being, it's impossible to deny what an impact the man had on the professional wrestling landscape. Well, that's it for this summary. If you enjoyed the rundown, that's great. If not, that's okay too. I hope to produce more videos in time and hopefully some people end up liking them.